It's where, you know, there are certain points where k and minus k are the same point. And at those points, surface states, states which are localized at the surface inside the energy gap, if they exist, they have to be Kramer's pairs. Okay? Um, now, uh, in two, in, in, so for a two-dimensional surface, there are four of these special points. And at each of these special points, um, uh, I have to have, um, uh, you know, this Kramer's degeneracy. If I move away from these points, then again, in general, a spin-orbit interaction will lift the degeneracy. So each of these Kramer's degenerate points, e e each of these points is really going to be a two-dimensional Dirac point. Okay, where, where this, uh, you know, degeneracy is really protected by uh, time reversal symmetry. Um, and so, the, so you have lots of Dirac points on the surface, but the interesting question is how they connect up with each other, okay? Because either they can connect up with each other, if they all connect up with each other like this, then you just have a trivial insulator, because I could get rid of the surface states. Um, uh, I could just pull them all down. Uh, uh, into the uh, valence band, okay? But um, if they connect like this on any pair of these, then I have something that I can't get rid of, okay? So, uh, so maybe you can sort of see that since, since now I have four of these different pairs, that it's actually a little bit more complicated. Um, uh, there are more ways, you know, I could have some of them, some of the pairs could look like this, and some of the pairs could look like this, and so maybe there's a little bit richer structure. So it turns out, in fact, there are four um, Z2 topological invariants that summarize the topological structure of a three-dimensional crystal and tell you whether the picture looks like this or this on, on any surface, okay? And so, um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so three of these uh, invariants, I think as Zahid uh, mentioned to you yesterday, um, are really just characterizing what we call a weak topological insulator where I can think of that as um, just stacked, la uh, you know, layering um, uh, two-dimensional topological insulators on top of each other, just forming a stack. You see, because if I do that, then what you know is um, uh, if I just stack them and they're not talking to each other at all, then, then, then on the side surfaces, I'm going to have the helical uh, edge states uh, going along, okay? And, um, uh, and so if I think of, that, uh, of the band structure of that, then, then there will be sort of a Fermi surface that looks like this. And then if I couple them together a little bit, then, then the Fermi surface will sort of bow out a little bit. Okay, um, and so this is a weak topological insulator. The important thing here is that this Fermi surface on the surface, um, it encloses two of these uh, time reversal invariant uh, Dirac points, okay? The more interesting situation is the situation where what we call a strong topological insulator, where the Fermi surface just encloses, on the surface just encloses a single one of these uh, 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 Dirac points. Okay, um, and so this case is the case is is the case which is um, sort of uh, more robust. And so again, um, uh, uh, w in this case, these states um, are um, impossible to localize um, even with strong disorder. Okay, so they're, they're, they have the same um, sort of robustness as the as the uh, helical edge states of the quantum spin hall uh, insulator. Yes. Yes. So the top surface wouldn't have anything. So then, is, the, is this structure uh, dependent on which edge and what symmetry is? For the weak topological insulator, yes, it is. For the strong topological insulator, no matter what edge you choose, there will always be an odd number of, um, of Dirac points enclosed by your Fermi surface. No matter what, yeah. Of course, there could be three instead of one. But there can't be zero. Now, on the weak topological insulator, um, uh, the Fermi surface encloses an even number of these Dirac points. Okay, and on some surfaces, that number could be zero. So, for instance, on the top surface of a stack of of, of you know two-dimensional topological insulators, you, you you know you don't have any surface states. No, 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 no. I mean, so these, 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 uh, 
these uh, topological invariants are defined independent of the surface. So they're, 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 they characterize the bulk. And so, so what I'm saying is that um, uh, uh, the different possibilities that the surface can have are these. And so the, the, so the question is, what is the structure in the bulk that determines whether the pic which picture you have on the surface? Okay, and, and so, um, uh, you know, so, um, uh, so, I, so at this point, I haven't explained to you, you know, how we, you know, how we determine these, these bulk topological invariants. And the possible surface of real one zones that we can write down are a subset of the real one zones that we would write down for a two-dimensional system, correct? Well, the real one zone is the same, but, the, but if, this, if the structure looks like this, then this could not be a structure in a two-dimensional, purely two-dimensional system. Right, because 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 um, you know you know the um, this thing you know in a two-dimensional system you don't have the conduction and valence band you know yeah so 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 this could not exist in a purely two-dimensional uh, system yeah uh, so when you look at the the invariant on the edge but we're looking at the uh, band dispersion you can kind of uh, as you said in like specific cases just kind of pretty simply pick it out. Um, for this, for these topological invariants in the bulk, is it, are you doing something like integrating um, the wave function over the three-dimensional Brillouin zone? Um, so let's see. Uh, okay. So, so let me just tell you a little bit about how you can think about these three-dimensional invariants. Okay. So, so um, I, and, and am I, am I, do I need to stop? Um, Maybe yeah, I, about wrapping it up for an hour. Okay, so let me just let me just say one word about the about about how we how we determine these uh, three dimensional. You see, so one way there are different ways you can do it. One way you can do it is by thinking of the um, so in a three dimensional system in the in the three dimensional Brillouin zone there are there are two dimensional planes which are time reversal invariant. Okay, like the plane KZ equals zero is is a time reversal invariant plane. So that plane itself has a a two-dimensional um, Z2 invariant. I can think of that as being like a two-dimensional system. The plane KZ equals pi also has um, uh, a, a, a Z2 invariant. So each of these planes has its own Z2 invariant, and by knowing those, um, you, can, uh, you can figure out what, um, what all of the four uh, Z2 uh, invariants uh, is, okay? And so in particular, the strong uh, Z2 invariant um, is what happens if you have the plane at k equals zero is not equal to the plane at k equals pi. Okay, and then uh, if that's the case, you can show that that is true for all three of these, of these, of these pairs. And so that's what the strong Z2 invariant is. Whereas the weak Z2, if you have a weak topological invariant, then you have something where this one and this one are the same. And, and that could happen if you just have a stacked uh, system where it's independent of KZ. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm finished with what I'm going to say, so then, then we can have some more questions. Um, when you say we talk about the relationship later, it's still fairly robust to, uh, like, perturbations, right? Because you actually move the Dirac and skew each other before they split. Is that cool? Which Dirac? You're talking about uh, these, these Dirac cons? Yeah. No, they can't move because they are guaranteed by time reversal symmetry. Oh. They're stuck where they live. Oh, okay, very good, very good question. So in order to break a weak topological insulator, what you need is you need a perturbation that couples this Dirac point to this one. So you need to lower the translation symmetry. So if I was to put on a periodic, uh, if I was to double the unit cell and put on a periodic potential which lowers it, you know, so I have to go by two, then I would fold this Dirac point back onto this one. And then, th then I could have a perturbation which couples them together and, 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 and opens a gap. Right, but so in graphene, the Dirac points are not protected by, you know, it's time over, they can move if you, yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay, okay good.